Welcome to Cat and Girl Lab. In this video, I'll start by showing you two quick ways to model a star. Then we'll move on to some more dynamic methods that work better with subdivision and animation. After that, I'll show how to create soft, puffy effects using cloth physics. Once we set up the lighting and materials, we'll wrap up with a simple animation using geometry nodes. I hope you'll find some useful tips along the way. Get ready. That's the simple star done. If you like this video, don't forget like and subscribe. Just kidding, we're not done yet. The previous methods are quick and simple, great for static models or still scenes. But if you take a closer look at the faces, this one has triangles and this one has an n-gon, meaning it has more than four vertices. Once we apply a subdivision surface modifier, you can see that the edge flow becomes uneven and the surface starts to show unexpected patterns or distortions. The shading won't look clean and textures can stretch unpredictably. Now, if we compare these with the one we'll use for the cloth physics setup, the difference is clear. Even before applying any shiny material, the clean topology already looks smoother and more consistent without those random bumps. Let's move on to the subdivision friendly way of modeling. In the first approach, the base mesh might start with an end gone, but that's okay. Once we add a subdivision modifier, it can still flow nicely and divide into clean quads, keeping the surface smooth and even. We can extrude once and call it done, or extrude one more time to get a shape that looks more like a sea star. This approach gives us more freedom to refine the star's corners and control how sharp or soft each point feels. We can apply the same method to make a clean four-point star as well. Here's a quick demo. In the second approach, we'll use the simple star from the extra objects add-on. Let's clean up the unnecessary edges to keep only quads for the base mesh. Perfect for the soft, puffy effects we'll add later. Continuing with this model, we can add a wireframe modifier and instantly get a really cool geometric effect. All right, let's go back to the last step. Here comes the fun part. First, we'll select the vertices and assign them for the cloth simulation. I'll adjust the cloth parameters one by one so you can see how each setting affects the result and understand why I'm using those specific values. You can already see a bit of the area that's pinned. After adding the shrink factor, the folds start to appear, but right now they look a bit too large, almost like flower petals. If we turn on the statistics here, you can see we currently have about 1,900 vertices. So let's add a subdivision modifier. I'll increase the level twice, which brings us to over 30,000 vertices. That should give us enough detail to achieve the soft, sophisticated puff effect I'm going for. All right, let's play the animation and take a look. Right now, it's shrinking a bit too much, so we can lower the shrink factor slightly. I'll also enable self-collision. That helps the folds interact more naturally and keeps the shape from collapsing too much. 
Now you can stop at any frame you like and apply the shape as a mesh. Likewise, we can assign a new vertex group and pin it differently to create another variation of the puffy star. That's all for the star modeling part. Next, we'll start setting up the lights and shading to bring this star to life. I'll start with the composition I've already set up. Uh, this time I'm going with a studio lighting setup, an area light as the main source, and a few spotlights to add shadows and depth. Now that the basic lights are set, you can add an arrow marker here and then uncheck the light collection. This way the lights won't be accidentally altered and it'll be easier to select your objects. I'm also using a Studio HDRI to add some subtle environmental light, just enough to brighten the scene without overpowering it. For the plane, I'm adding a subtle noise texture to give it some surface variation, which will play nicely with the reflections on the glass and metal stars. To match the starry theme, I'm going with a deep cosmic blue to evoke a galaxy atmosphere. And a touch of emission adds a soft, ethereal glow.
you're happy with the image from the camera, you can go ahead and render it. But if you want to bring the scene to life with some dynamic motion, without having to tweak keyframes manually, stick around for the next part. I've already grouped all the objects into a single collection. Now I'm creating a plane to host the geometry nodes set up for the collection. With the plane ready, we can dive into geometry nodes to animate the entire collection. This lets us add motion to all the stars at once without touching each object individually. I'll start by animating the z-axis position and connect all the nodes. Once everything is set up, I'll come back and explain how each part works. As you can see, the frequency is a bit too high right now. We'll use this divide node to control how fast the objects float. Otherwise, they'd move just as quickly as the scene's timeline. For the random value, I'm using a minimum of 12.566, which is 4 pi, and a maximum of 62.83, or 10 pi. This gives each object a random phase offset over multiple cycles, making the motion feel more natural and less synchronized. Next, let's look at the multiply node. This determines how high each object floats. Once the z-axis motion is set, we can group these nodes together and give them a clear name. Now I'm adding a bit of motion to the x and y axes using a noise texture. I'm separating the x, y, z output so the noises x and y values can drive the object's positions. I'm also using the 4D version of the noise node, so the frame number adds subtle variation over time. You can use a vector math multiply node to control the amplitude, how far the objects move. And the noise texture scale controls the frequency, how tightly the motion patterns appear. By experimenting with these parameters, you can find the right balance to achieve the motion you want. Finally, if you want to add some rotation, just use a Rotate Instances node. You can reuse the same position setup and connect it to the rotation input. At this point, it's pretty much done. Just fine-tune the rotation a little to get the look you like. If you like this video, don't forget like and subscribe.